thought I'd try something different and do a voiceover of the install of this engine. So here we go. The first thing I do is wire up all of my LED lights. There's different sizes, three millimeter and five millimeter. The five millimeter for the headlights. And as you can see here, I leave the long end on the resistors in case I need to twist them together. It makes it easier. Then on the body, I drill holes for the ditch lights. As you can see, the one on the right's a little bit low, but you can't see it when the bulb is sticking out. Then I strip everything off the body, handrails and any other loose parts that might get broken during disassembly. Next, I flip it over, remove all the screws to take the chassis off the body, which is very easy to do with an Aristocraft GP40. Then I gut it. All of the electronics come out. Anything original comes out, light bulbs, boards, everything comes out. Even the little board that's on the trucks. I also like to ensure that there are no, there's no power back feeding back to the track. So <clears throat> sometimes I take them apart if I'm suspect of the gears and the gears were okay with this one. But if you don't want to take apart the trucks on an Aristocraft engine, you can simply remove the metal wire that goes from one end to the other on the truck. That's this wire right here. You can get in there with an X-Acto knife, peel it up, use a pair of pliers and slide it out. That prevents power from backfeeding. I don't know if it's even possible, but I do it anyway. Then what you have left are two power leads coming out and you can direct wire those right to the RailPro board. Make sure you swap the wires because the motor blocks are all the same. One is facing one way and one is facing the other way. So to make sure that they run together you have to do that this is a view of the inside with the step lights that i put in and the back side of the ditch lights and all the wires going down through when i do the body i start from the back and i build a little box so the light for the number boards only lights up the number boards moving on i install the speaker and i make a baffle or a box around the speaker from an old styrofoam cup like a Polar Pop cup from Circle K. It's flexible to fit around the speaker. This makes it so the sound is a little more deep and you get a little more bass. And then I just use part of the cup to finish the box, if you will, around the speaker. Use some hot glue, glue it all together and glue up the whole where the speaker wires are coming out. Moving on up the engine, I install the battery and glue it in place. It's not hard to pop this glue if you ever need to replace the battery. And then from there, I actually hook the rail pro board up to figure out which way the switch goes. I know there's other ways to do it, but this is how I do it. And then I label the switch so when the engine is on, the switch will actually be up in the on position. And that just gets hot glue gunned into place. You can see right there, it uh, makes for a nice clean install. As you can see there, the switch, again, when it's in the up position, there's the charging port also. So that works out really well. Then I actually wire up the rail pro board for all the wires that need to go in this end. The two red wires on the left are the positive leads for all of the LED lights. Then I cut two wood blocks, hot glue, glue gun them to the bottom of the rail pro board. And at this point, I can actually install the rail pro board into the body you'll be able to access the screws from the top side if necessary. 
And then I just start to do wiring. I start from the back again. Wire, this is wiring in the headlights or the rear lights, if you will, for the back. And these are the headlights for the front along with the light that goes for the number boards. That piece does come off the front of the engine, makes it easy to install. And I just twist the wires so it's nice and neat. The bulkhead on the left needs to be modified a little bit to fit that large twist of wires to go through it as there was only, I think, two or three wires before. Then I did a light on the inside for a cab light, just drilled a hole in a piece of styrene and mounted the light to it with some hot glue. I also use my helping hands all the time um, to hold wires out of the way or to stretch them while things are gluing. That light up front is for the walk path around the front of the motor, front of the engine, I should say. Then it's just a matter of wiring everything up. Um, I use a four plug MU for some lights in the front, two plug MU for the motors and a two plug MU because the ditch lights in the back come on with the rear lights. And then I test and test and test and test. This is the layout of the buttons on my remote. Um, <clears throat> the only reason why I took a picture is because I'm doing three of these engines and I want them all to have the exact same layout and the same labels, obviously, except for the number on the side of the motor, which in this case was 3716. <clears throat> and here they are lit up, two GP40s in the middle shelf there, the B&O and the chassis system. You can see the step lights and so on. And this is the picture that I stole off the internet to put on the Rail Pro remote so I know which engine is which. That should do it.